Chetan Narula reporting for Cricket Country from the Melbourne Cricket Ground, which is our last stop on this long Australian tour. And uh, what a setting this is going to be for the third and final ODI between Australia and India. What a climax this is going to be after the T20 series was drawn. India won their historic test series on Australian soil. And now we arrive here for the last game at the MCG. What an iconic, iconic ground this is. For Australia, of course, they are still on the cusp of winning their first ODI series since January 2017 when they beat Pakistan at home. Of course, they can dare to dream. This is a weakened Australian side in terms of batting and bowling. The, the same names missing once again because of bans and their paces have been rested. But they've given a good accord of themselves, competing with a very, very strong Indian lineup and coming here with a 1 1 series scoreline. Australia have made two changes for this final ODI. They've already announced they're playing 11, bringing in Adam Zampa in place of Nathan Lyon. Zampa is, of course, your leg spinner and perhaps a more wicket taking threat. That's what they're aiming for, taking wickets in the middle overs. Nathan Lyon has uh, gone wicket wicketless in both the Sydney and Adelaide ODIs. Meanwhile, they're also forced to change their pace combination, bringing in Billy Stanlake in place of uh, Jason Berendorf, who's who's got a sore back issue. For India, well, they haven't named their playing 11. In fact, they had an optional training session. We had a few players coming in, MS Dhoni, Shikhar Dhawan, Kedar Jadav, Ambati Raidu, Yuzvendra Chahal, and Vijay Shankar. Because for India, they, they've been struggling with the fifth bowling option, not even the sixth, the fifth bowling option. We had Khalil Ahmed, who struggled to get going in Sydney. Then we had Mohammad Siraj, who on debut was also struggling in Adelaide. Of course, it was heat. He was playing his first game in, in the ODI format. So, you know, these factors can count for something. But, but there was a moment in Adelaide and there was a moment in Sydney as well where India did not know how to finish the 10 over quota of their fifth bowler. That is a problem. You don't want to go in a series deciding match thinking about where those extra three, four overs are coming from. So there are a couple of options that India can go in with. This is a big ground, big boundaries. Yuzvendra Chahel gives you an attacking option, an economical option as well. And he can bowl with a new ball too. So maybe play three spinners. You can have Chahel, Ravindra Jadeja, Kuldeep Yadav. You know, you can exert control with 30 overs of spin. But is that too much of spin? You know, 30 overs, is that too much? Because then you have only two pace options with Bhuvneshwar Kumar and Mohammad Shami. So what do you do? You don't have Hardik Pandya. You have Vijay Shankar, who could make his ODI debut tomorrow because he bowls seam-up option. He gives you a seam-up option. He's also a good batsman, can elongate that batting order. But are India really confident that Vijay Shankar will give them 10 overs? Or do you compensate for that and play Kedar Jadav? Remember, Ambati Raidu can still bowl in international cricket, but his action is now suspect and the umpires can call it a no ball. So can India... Or will India bring in Kedar Jadav instead of Ambati Raidu, get maybe MS Dhoni at number four or Dinesh Karthik at number four, even Kedar Jadav at number, number four. But the point here is, will they balance bringing in Vijay Shankar and, you know, getting out those 10 overs? So a lot of uh, permutation combinations up in the air just for that one spot. Will India play two all-round players or two part-time players to fulfill that quota of the fifth 10 over block or will they again go in, go in with somebody like Khalil or even Mohammad Siraj Khalil remember did play the T20 match here it was rained off but he did put in a good performance during the T20 series so he might have recovered himself from that showing in Sydney and might put in a good performance here as well so a lot of uh, balls up in the air for India in terms of selection they could have a couple of different combinations going into this game but the point is they can go or they are trying to go unbeaten, technically unbeaten through this tour. They drew the T20 series, won the Test series. What a boost it will be if they finish this Australian tour with an ODI series win as well. Remember, India have won only twice, ODI series only twice on Australian soil. 1985, the World Championship of Cricket and 2008, the CB series. They've never won 
a bilateral ODI series on Australian soil. Of course, this is only the second time they're playing a bilateral ODI series on Australian soil. The last time in 2016, they were beaten 4-1. This time, they could turn the tables.